many thanks for joining us on News Now on TV360 Nigeria. I am Aneta Felix. The Nigerian Army says its troops have killed four Boko Haram insurgents in Borno State, Northeast Nigeria. The terrorists were killed by troops of 192 Battalion Goza, Borno State, in conjunction with members of Civilian Joint Tax Force on January 30. According to the force, the soldiers were fighting uh, when the fighting parole patrol along Goza Yemteka Road when they came in contact with a number of unspecified insurgents. Two AK-47 rifles and two magazines were recovered from the fleeing terrorists. The development follows the destruction of a Boko Haram terrorist logistics base in Sambisa Forest, Borno State, by the Air Force uh, Operation Lafayette on January 28th. To electoral matters now, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, says it has approved the final list of candidates for the governorship, state assembly and FCT area council elections scheduled for March 2nd, 2019. In a statement released on its Twitter handle, INEC noted that there are 1,066 candidates for the governorship elections, 14,583 candidates for the state assembly elections, and 803 candidates for the FCT area council election, broken down into 105 chairmanship candidates and 701 councillorship candidates. However, missing from the list were candidates of the All Progressives Congress in Zamfara State. The electoral body in the statement maintained that the party did not conduct valid primaries to elect candidates for the governorship, national assembly and state assembly elections. INEC said it reached a decision after carefully considering two court judgments on the issue. Still on electoral matters, with less than 16 days left to the general election, the Independent National Electoral Co Commission, INEC, has added to its rank of, el of resident electoral commissioners with swearing-in of Monday Tom from Akwaibom State. The INEC chairman, Yakubu Mahmoud, oversaw the swearing-in ceremony at the commission's headquarters in Abuja. Tom, who is a 36th resident electoral commissioner, will be deployed to Bios Estates for service. He is expected to exercise supervisory control over personnel, resources, as well as the legal and administrative processes in Bios Estate. We will also interact with various categories of stakeholders. In doing so, you must maintain the required openness and consultation. At the same time, you must be very firm and courageous on the side of the law, as well as our regulations and guidelines at all times, as required of you as an unbiased umpire. Furthermore, as a resident electoral commissioner, you can be posted to any part of the country at any time as the exigencies of service require. For now, you will be posted to a state within your geopolitical zone, but you will never serve in your state of origin throughout your tenure. In line with this principle, you are, you are hereby deployed to Bielsa State. I want to promise my chairman and others leadership I will bear that I will bring that to bear in my conduct throughout my stay as Chairman and National Commissioner. Like the order I've taken today, I will hold dear to my heart. I will make sure that every Nigerian is treated equal at every given time. I wish to state that when I was screened in the Senate, the statement I made was that I came into this world with nothing and I'm not going to go with anything out of it. Therefore, I'm contented with whatever God gives to me. I will not go beyond what is legitimately mine in order not to undermine the integrity of myself and the integrity of this commission. The electoral body has also been meeting people with disability ahead of the elections. Now, INEC has partnered with international bodies to map the needs of persons with disabilities for the 2019 elections and electoral observers are in Abuja to witness the research presentation. Now, this next report gives more details. It's another election year and Nigeria's electoral body, INEC, 
says it has worked out plans to ensure 25 million disabled Nigerians express their franchise, including providing Braille ballot guides for the visually impaired voters. The person with low vision and um, albinism, we have introduced the use of magnifying lenses that enable them to be able to vote uh, independently in uh, past uh, governorship elections and uh, that is going to be used in the general election as well. That is to tell you that a person in that person having those challenges will be able to um, cast their vote more independently and also um, the issue of accessibility to those that may require um, assistance to the polling unit. We have trained uh, personnel to locate polling units where it will be easy for those that need that will go to the polling booth to cast their vote in a way that it will not be difficult for them to access it as much as it is possible. Those small areas are going to be uh, are being uh, are, are being addressed. Most of our visually impaired or most of our uh, disabled that are youth copper now, they are capable of then register as a polling unit officials. And I happened to be one of the polling unit officials as the presiding officer. It brings awareness to the society that to prove to the society that there is ability in disability in every life. A week ago, President Mohamed Buhari signed the Discrimination Against Persons with Disability Bill into law to protect persons living with disabilities. Among other things, the Act requires public buildings to be modified so that physically challenged persons can access them and that employers reserve at least 5% employment opportunities for persons with disability. This new law imposes a fine of up to 1 million naira and a jail term of 6 months for offenders. In support for the implementation of this Act, this data is going to support INEC in implementing this act, in particular, in ensuring that persons with disabilities have equal voting access uh, during elections. That's why we are here. This uh, data mining took place in seven states, namely Kano, Gombe, Plateau, Lagos, Rivers, Enugu, and Abia states. That's what we are presenting. We thank the federal government for passing the um, the, the, the Discrimination Against Persons Prohibition Act, Persons with Living with Disabilities Prohibition Act. But what we also believe is that we should go just beyond passing the bill into act. There is need to activate that law. There is need to also start planning because we know that all that we are doing today will not actually be affected during the election that is coming next month. But as we move to the next cycle of elections, we should not wait for the next elections for us to take into consideration the rights, the privileges, and the needs of people living with disabilities. So the journey just started. I think we'll, we'll keep making incremental increases of successes, even as we we'll ensure inclusivity, respect for human dignity, and the right of people living with disabilities to vote as we move into the election. Most persons with disabilities did not receive preferential treatment in the 2015 general election as required by law. But with this new regulation, persons with disability are looking forward to a different experience when they head for the polls in two weeks. Annetta Felix, TV360, Lagos. Focusing on political matters now, the Coalition of United Political Parties, CUPP, have filed a suit at the Federal High Court of Buja, asking it to declare the candidates of the All Progressives Congress, President Muhammad Buhari, medically unfit to seek re-election. CUPP National Spokesperson Imo Iguchinieri made this known at a press conference in Abuja on Thursday. The coalition is also asking the court to direct President Buhari to make public the result of his medical examination. Describing the step as a patriotic decision, Ugochiniere says Buhari's re-election would only empower cabal members who have hijacked the presidency to rule for another four years. And now to judicial matters. The appeal court sitting in Abuja has dismissed the suit filed by Olisametu, former spokesman of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, requesting approval 
to travel abroad for medical treatment. Matu had approached the court seeking his, through his counsel, seeking to obtain the decision of a federal high court, which ordered that his international passport should not be released to him uh, to enable him to travel to the United Kingdom for five weeks to attend to his failing health. In a ruling on Thursday, the appellate court maintained that Matu's application was an abuse of court process as he fails to disclose logical reasons for him to seek medical attention abroad. The trial judge, Justice Okun Abang, said the suit lacked merit and won Matu's counsel against the point tactics to delay the trial, which has been on since January 6, 2016. Now, almost two years after the dismissal of Ayodele Oke as the Director General of the National Intelligence Agency, NIA, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has filed a four-count charge against the former DG and his wife, Folasha Day. Oke was suspended in April 2017 by President Muhammad Buhari after the sum of 13 billion naira was discovered in an Ikoi apartment belonging to his wife. The anti-graft agency also filed a 10-count charge against Babacha Lawal, former secretary to the government of the Federation at the Federal High Court in Abuja. Lawal, who was dismissed from his position in 2018, was accused of embezzling 87 billion naira. Oke and his wife will be arraigned in court on Friday, while Lawal will be in court next week. Presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubakar, says he will consider granting amnesty to corrupt persons willing to surrender their loot if elected into office. Speaking at a television program on the 2019 elections, Atiku said the issue of corruption has been an impediment to the growth of Nigeria and that it needs to be taken more seriously. The statement has however generated various reactions from Nigerians with Human Rights Group, Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, SEREP, condemning the plan. The group says such a plan would only increase the incidences of corruption in the state, adding that the corrupt must be held to account. Meanwhile, the All Progressives Congress APC have also reacted to another statement made by the presidential candidate of the opposition People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubakar. Now, the party has denied reports that the nation's GDP growth rate was at 6% when President Muhammad Buhari assumed office in 2015. Abubakar had made the claims on Wednesday while speaking on a television program focused on the 2019 elections. Now, in reaction, the official spokesperson of the Buhari Presidential Campaign Council, Festus Kiamo, in a statement re realized on a Thursday, dismissed the claim stating that the APC inherited a failing economy with a GDP growth of 2.35%. Let's talk health now as the Joint Health Sector Union's Jehesu has threatened to embark on an industrial action over what it describes as indifference on the part of the federal government to resolve their labor dispute. In a press statement by Jehesu's president, Josiah Biobilemoye, the health workers threatened to resume the industrial action any time from now. The development comes weeks after the union issued a 15-day ultimatum asking the government to implement a new salary adjustment structure. They also want the government to pay all salaries of members withheld between April and May last year. The five affiliate unions of Jehesu have the National Association of Nigerian Nurses and Midwives, the Nigerian Union of Allied Health Professionals and Medical and Health Workers Union. Our others include the Senior Staff Association of Universities, Teaching Hospitals, Research Institutes and Associated Institutions and Association of Medical Laboratory Scientists of Nigeria. You're still watching news now on CV36 Nigeria. We'll be right back after this. Do stay with us. In the last three years, we have built a multi-purpose center, which is the envy of all in our constituency. And I can tell you that the people who are living there are already enjoying it. Guy, do you think what this man just said is true? See, I seriously doubt. I'm sure it's one of those that are silly lies. And hey, wait, do you know there's a way to find out if these things he's saying is true or not? Ah. This is the construct app. It gives people like us a sure way to track implementation of constituency projects. It gives valid and verified information on location of projects, amounts allocated, 
amount funded, the level of job done, and even the profiles of concerned legislators. You and I can post directly on this app. Are you serious? This is the GoTo app. If you want to know how our commonwealth is being expended by the government. Wow. Let's even see if what this man said is true. Show me. The Construct app is developed by Other People Nigeria with support from USAID and is available on both Google Play Store and Apple Store. Eh, that is true. <laughs> of course, I told you. We have Oyi Adekunle with the business news. Hello, Oyi. Hi, Aneta. So uh, the federal government has been trying to attract foreign investors into the country. Uh, and just how are they going about it? Yes, the Nigeria's Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Ibe Kachiku, has appealed to the major international oil companies doing business in Nigeria to adopt universities within their spheres to, for operation and make them centers of excellence. Kachiku made this appeal during a press conference to round off the second Nigeria International Petroleum Summit, NIPS, in Abuja. He admitted that oil is the mainstay of the country's economy and should be able to finance oil studies in Nigerian universities and anything short is not acceptable. If petroleum did that and agriculture did the same thing and the lawyers came together to do the same thing, very soon you find the Nigerian universities that are being abandoned left, right and center begin to take the centers of excellence. At a minimum, oil is sustained this country. Oil ought to be able to provide the very best center of learning for oil studies in Nigeria, otherwise we have nothing to give to Africa. And I'm expecting centers that are the very best in the world, so that if you have to study petroleum resource related type subjects, there's no, there's no need for you to pay foreign exchange to go anywhere because the very best is sitting here. And if after 50 years of oil production, we can't even give that to our people, something is missing. And I'll be driving this further with uh, NCDMB and expanding the code for us, to, for, them, for us to work together on this and work with oil companies and see how best we can get this accomplished. The Central Bank of Nigeria has announced that between January and September 2018, a total foreign exchange inflow of $40.93 billion was recorded in the country. The figure, when compared with the $27.95 billion recorded in the first nine months of 2017, represents an increase of $12.98 billion. An analysis of the third quarter economic report of the CBN showed that about $14.15 billion dollars passed through the Apex Bank in the first quarter of last year. In the second quarter of last year, the CBN recorded foreign exchange inflow of $13.82 billion, while the sum of $12.95 billion was recorded during the third quarter of 2018. Oil prices rose for a third day on Thursday, pushed up by lower imports into the United States amid OPEC efforts to tighten the market and as Venezuela struggles to keep up its crude exports after Washington imposed sanctions on the nation. 
U.S. West crude futures were at $54.47 per barrel, up 24 cents from the last settlement, while International Brent crude futures were up 36 cents at $62.01 per barrel. The price rise came after a report from the U.S. Energy Information Administration, EIA, on Wednesday showed a drop in Saudi crude supply to the United States. Stock market report is up next right after this break. Please stay with us. With the market capitalization closing at 11.394 trillion and the all share index at 30. 1,557 basis points, the Nigeria Stock Exchange is sustaining the bearish trend with which it started the week, closing at 1.89% decline. Over 300 million shares were traded on the floor of the market, which saw 4,288 deals trans to form that transacted and um, it's worth 3.499491 billion naira. Now on the top gainers we have Vitaphone PLC from the consumer sector and what's particularly interesting about Vitaphone PLC is that the equities of this particular company has in the last seven days been selling for 4.49 naira before it edged up to 4.5 naira yesterday. Today it's outperforming, as you can see, to close at 4.8 naira. Next on the chart is CAP PLC, Len Africa PLC from the services sector, and of course, Union Bank of Nigeria PLC. On the flip side, we have Dangote Cement of Nigeria PLC. We have Nigeria Breweries, Julius Berger, and Stambik IBTC Holding PLC, which is closing at 45.2 Naira. It's lowest in the week, actually. A look at um, the global stock market shows that Dow Jones is back in the red, despite the fact that the market actually rose yesterday. The declines in Microsoft shares is strongly believed to have influenced the index today, and the FTSE is however rising as the UK gets closer to sealing its Brexit deal. The Nikkei also saw a bullish session recording a 1.06% growth at, and closing, at the closing of trade today. That's all on the stock market review today. Aneta, it's over to you. And thank you so much for that, uh, Oi. And indeed, it's the last trading day for January 2019. And we see that the FTSE is opening and closing higher. Uh, so bad for the Dow Jones, uh, they actually fell below, you know, fair value. Mm -hmm. And uh, good news also for uh, Japan's Nikkei closing higher on a positive note. Mm -hmm. That's true. All right, so we'll take a break here and we'll bring you more from around the world. Just stay with us. Corruption not in my country. Hello? Yeah, I found your wallet in front of a supermarket. Meet me at Apple Junction. Yes, I'll be waiting for you. Now we find out. <laughs> Two of us. <laughs> Thank you very much, officer. You know, it's surprising that men like you still exist in the police force. Yes, so... Oh, yes. This is just a token <laughs> of my appreciation. Oh, no. You don't need to do this. We're only doing our job. Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much. God You're bless welcome. you. You're welcome. Now I know police is really my friend. Yes. Friend. Hey. Okay, which came up with this one? Nah, I don't understand. I mean, I mean, you know your problem. You are greedy. Uh, I'm a policeman who is doing his job. All forms of corruption in the force. Not in my country. Corruption not in my country. At least eight people have been killed in several states across the U.S. Midwest region uh, in the wake of shivers caused by polar vortex. The deaths were recorded in Indiana, Iowa, Illinois, Detroit, and uh, Milwaukee. Snow fell throughout Wednesday from the Great Lakes region into New England, and as much as uh, 24 inches was forecast in the state of Wisconsin 
and six inches in Illinois. Cities have been shutting down and nearly 15,000 flights have also been either delayed or cancelled as a result of the Arctic weather. States of emergency have been declared in the Midwestern states of Wisconsin, Michigan and Illinois and even in the normally warmer deep south states of Alabama and Mississippi as temperatures are expected to fall as low as 28 degrees Celsius or lower by the end of the week. And in politics in the UK, British Prime Ministers uh, are canceling their planned holiday next month to allow time to pass key legislation ahead of the scheduled date for Brexit on March 29. This decision was announced by Prime Minister Theresa May on Thursday. Now, according to her, this shows that members of parliament are taking all available steps to ensure that March 29 date is met. And in sports, Lobby Stars will go all out to secure a second win in the CAF Champions League group stage. And that's when the host wired... Uh Wydad Casablanca in Enugu on Friday. The Makodi Bay side lost by a lone goal at Abidjan against Asek Mimosas in their last outing, and a win will put back their qualification hopes on track. This is the first time both teams will be meeting, and anything short of victory at the Innamdi Ezekiel Stadium might spell doom for the Nigerians. Manchester United striker Anthony Marshall has finally agreed a new five-year contract with the club following months of negotiations and transfer speculation. The Frenchman rejected an extension offer back in October last year. Amid widespread reports, he was unhappy with the situation at the club under former boss Jose Mourinho. His previous deal was due to expire at the end of the 2018-19 campaign but United triggered a one-year extension and continued talks over a more permanent arrangement. After embarking on a nine-match unbeaten streak under the Norwegian, Marshall has decided to pledge his long-term future to the club in a major boost for the team ahead of a crucial run of fixtures. The 23-year-old attacker has hit 42 goals in 161 games for the club, winning the FA Cup, Europa League and the League Cup. And in Europe, leading leagues are making their final signings for the rest of the season on transfer deadline day as it, hit, as it closes by midnight. Premier League clubs in England have until 11 p.m. to sign players in what could be the last transfer window before Britain leaves the European Union, impacting future trading, while the transfer window closes in Spain at 10.59 p.m. Now, Newcastle United, Arsenal and Manchester City have already secured deadline day signings, while it remains a quiet transfer window in Tottenham and Manchester United. And that's it around the world right now. On News Now, thank you for watching. Do log on to our website at www.tv36nigeria.com for more. Follow us on all social media platforms at TV36Nigeria. I am Aneta Felix. Bye for now.